Horizons is a delightful game, isn't it? On your idyllic island, we all find ourselves blissfully running around catching butterflies and palling around with our neighbours. Yet Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't just fun solo, as you can have a maximum of eight players on your island at any one time and get into some larks together. If you're like us and have friends around most nights, sometimes you might find hanging out needs a bit of extra oomph. I feel exactly the same way, so I've rounded up 14 things to do with friends in Animal Crossing New Horizons. From hide and seek to friend dates, here they are. You might not have played musical chairs since you were a kid, but it's actually a perfect activity for Animal Crossing New Horizons. It works best when you have a bunch of players and one designated music maker, as you all get to spectate until there's only two of you left, which ups the pressure and fun significantly. You know how this works. Put down one less stool than there are people on your island, and have one music player stand in the middle with an ocarina, a thumb piano, a marimba… anything really. They start to play while the rest of you run around the stools until the music stops. Then you get your butt on a stool as quickly as possible. Whoever's without a stool is now out, and this keeps going until there's only two people left and one stool. The first person to sit down is the winner! Hide and seek is great fun, and one of the best things about it is that you only need one other person to play. It's incredibly simple, one of you goes into a house or stays outside if you don't have trust issues and the other one hides outside somewhere. There's varying levels of difficulty too, like if you decide you're allowed to hide in houses or the museum, as that gives you more places to search and more things to hide behind. Top tip, every island has a secret beach at the very north atop the mountains, so if you really want to bemuse your pals, hide there, ideally behind a tree. Spice it up even more by giving the last person to be found a prize, or by trying to set records for how long it took to find you. But remember to put away whatever you have on hand, as a stray vaulting pole can easily be spotted from afar. Scavenger hunts are also a really engaging way to get those brains in gear, but it does require a bit more preparation than hide and seek or musical chairs. On the plus side, unless you have some absolutely killer hiders in your friendship group, scavenger hunts can take a while to solve, so it's entertainment that will last a fairly long time. The host has to write a list of all the things other players bring them, then it's a time challenge to see who can do it fastest. That might be stuff like bringing them something that begins with an S, find something blue, catch a bitterling, etc. etc. Things can get more advanced if you ask for something that has wheels, something bigger than a villager, or something that makes noise. Just be prepared to have your island turned upside down by your chums. Or get them to bring it from their island, which will make your life a lot easier. Just make sure they aren't cheating. Fishing competitions aren't only good for anyone with a competitive spirit, but they also make you a tidy sum of bells too, as you can always just sell all the fish afterwards. Either have a fish to catch in mind and the first one to get it is the winner, maybe a bitterling or a rarer fish like the football fish, or give each fish a point value and tally up everyone's hole at the end. Set a time limit and then whoever has the most points wins. You can also show off your fish to each other, which is just wholesome AF. Seriously, just look at your villager's little expression. Switch it to hard mode by not using any bait, or even trying to catch the same fish in one of those tiny little ponds. Prepare for lots of good-natured yelling if you decide to do that, though. Emma Kent of our lovely website Eurogamer.net came up with this next idea. Set up a swap shop. You can read her article about it on the site right now, and it'll help you set up your very own one. Lay out an area with nine tiles, and in each tile put a decent item that you don't want. Just don't chuck down 14 weeds or anything, that's just cruel. Invite your friends over, and then they can bring bits and bobs they don't want either. The idea is that whatever they pick up, they then swap for something in their inventory, hopefully giving you something better at the same time. This is perhaps the second most wholesome activity in this list, so feel free to try it out. Now this is the most wholesome thing on this list. Grab a friend, not literally, and take them on a little friend date. 
Give them a tour of your island, show them the new things you've decorated it with, and introduce them to your villagers. And maybe moan about the ones you don't like a little bit. Having a walk around the museum is also the perfect friend date location. You can wander around the aquarium, read about your favourite fossils, and go and sit in the butterfly house together to get that perfect pic. Friend dates are all about spending quality time with your pal, so try to get rid of any other distractions, like fishing or crafting, so you can focus on your buddy. Leaving notes on your friends' announcement boards is a really sweet thing to do for each other too. While you can absolutely tell people that you're leaving messages on their islands, I think it's sweeter to leave it as a cute surprise for when your pal next checks their announcement board and sees a hopefully kind message from you on there. You can make it a competition to see who can leave the most notes without the other person noticing, or just lean into the wholesomeness of it all. Aww. Keep your friends guessing with this Animal Crossing version of 20 questions. Find an item, then bury it in a hole. Invite some friends around and then get them to ask you questions about what is buried in the hole, which you can only answer yes or no to. Whoever guesses correctly first gets the item, and then it's their turn to bury something for you lot. It helps if you make something covetable though, as spending that much time over an item only to get a yellow perch in return is, well, not that much of a reward at all, to be honest. For those of you who are more on the creative side, a cosplay competition will engage that inner spark and bring genuine delight to your pals' faces. Cosplay competitions are a pretty simple concept. You design clothes to make you look like gaming or pop culture characters, or dress up as your friend. The thing that takes longest is preparing for cosplay competitions as you need to flex your pixel art muscles. But once you've got it done, make it into an event. Invite your buddies around, maybe even lay out a catwalk, and then stride down it to show off your designs. Like the cosplay competition, treasure hunts take planning and time, but the payoff is worth it. You'll need to come up with a handful of clues to lead your friends from one location to another, with buried treasure at the end. To stop them from just spotting where you've buried something on the island, you're going to want to have multiple decoys. Maybe eight or so, seven of which will be filled with trash, while one is the real treasure. And no, you can't bury friendship, although that is the real treasure we all find along the way. Once you've built the new residential services building on your island in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can come up with your very own island tune. Make your island tune a well-known or obscure song if you want it to be in hard mode, and this will make for a very nifty guessing game. All you need to do then is have your friend enter the Dodo Airlines office, or wait for the hour to strike, at which time your island tune will play. Or you can just send them a screenshot of the tune, have them set it as their own island tune, and have Isabel hum it to them. They then try to guess what each other's island tune is, and the first one to get three right wins. There's a bunch of different guidelines to making famous music and songs online, which you can use if, like me, you're not very musically inclined. Bug catching competitions are yet another way to entertain yourself when friends come a-knocking, but you can spice this one up quite a bit. Instead of catching a certain number of bugs in a certain time, or allocating points to different bugs that you catch, instead make the thing a hectic race to catch the same bug. Make sure each of you has a net, then pick a bug you can both see to catch. Butterflies work best for this as they fly around. Ready, set, go! And then the both of you race to see who can catch that single bug with their net first. This tests your hand-eye coordination as well as your skill with a net, as the pressure to catch it before your buddy leads to all manner of screeching. You could even let the butterfly go and continue to catch and release it, which is probably torture for the butterfly, but the continued game is pretty fun for you and your buddy. This next one is kind of like those memory games you might have played as a kid involving a tea tray and a tea towel. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, all you need is your museum and a decent memory recall. Invite a friend around or visit their island instead and see how many fish, bugs and fossils you can name correctly. You don't even have to make it into a competition. Instead, try to remember what fish or bugs or whatever are in front of you. And if you can't get them quite right, just read the plaques which give their names. See? Not only fun, but educational, as you're being tricked into learning. <sighs> Blathers will be so proud of you. 
Lastly, going stargazing with pals is a relaxing, chill way to wind down at the end of the night or after a long playing session. Make your way to the highest point on an island, flick the camera so it's pointing up to the sky, then just keep your eye on the stars above for a shooting star. When you spot one, hold A to make a wish and you'll get some star fragments the next day. For ultimate immersion though, why not pair all this with some talk about astronomy? Because ooh, isn't space big? And that's 14 activities you can do with friends in Animal Crossing New Horizons. From advanced to beginner's tips, we've got plenty more Animal Crossing New Horizons videos on Eurogamer, which you can see on the screen right now. Hit like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to Eurogamer for more videos about gaming. We release a new video every single day, so there's always something to watch. Now it's time for me to go gaze at the stars and quite possibly fall asleep. See you next time.